What is up, everybody? Sysadmin Sean here with some random Tuesday Sysadmin news. So as you can see on the screen, the first thing that I'm showing off is a post by iSoundly on the Proxmox subreddit. I want to give a shout out to them. Thanks for promoting this. They seem to be at Vmon, or at least they're watching Vmon. Um, Proxmox VE, more information about Proxmox and Veeam working together, which is a big deal for a lot of folks that are looking at VMware replacements, but not really looking to replace their backup tool. They want to use something they've trusted and used multiple times before. We're in that same boat. There is Veeam integration with other products like Hyper-V, and they're going to also add Oracle Linux Virtualization Manager if you use that. Um, but I'm really curious about the Proxmox because it does say host level backups with change with block change tracking um, or change block tracking. Uh, that's super big to me. I was afraid it sounds like you're not going to need to install the agent on all the VMs. Uh, if you want to maintain Veeam, but also migrate to Proxmox, which is a really big deal. I've heard some other companies that do, you can deploy Veeam, put the agent on all of your machines, and then keep using Veeam, which is fine. But I just, I like agentless as much as possible. And this sounds like that's what it's going to be. If you're at Veeam on 2024, or you have uh, digital connection or whatever, they are going to demo the product either today or tomorrow. So check that out if you can. Up next in news, this is kind of like a, a tool, a trick that I like to follow. Uh, for those of you that have Microsoft 365 tenants, maybe you're a global admin, maybe you're just a global reader, um, maybe you get a million trillion emails from Microsoft 365 all day, every day, and you don't read any of them. This user, uh, Kava June, posts all the updates for each month about things that are key changes, major deprecations, new features, retirements, enhancements, existing functionality changes. So there's tons of good information in here. And usually people in the comment section put links to the different events and stuff. So if you miss the email, you can, yeah, right here, you can see that people will pop in um, updates and things like that. And I highly recommend it. This is a great way to consume bite-sized information about your Microsoft 365 environment if you're a 365 user. Um, and you learn about a lot of things like I had no idea that people were gonna be able to add custom emojis and that we can turn that on and off, which I'm guessing we're probably gonna turn off just out of HR concerns. Um, so there's things like that in there that they just get missed in all the weeds. When you get tons of security change emails and cost allocation emails and licensing emails and everything goes to your mailbox, sometimes you miss somewhat important information about Microsoft, this is a great way to get it. And then, of course, the last thing we're going to bring up is the Ticketmaster breach. This is a big one. This this sounds pretty awful. Ticketmaster, if you don't know, you know who Ticketmaster is. Um, last week, they got um, breached. And for a while, they were like, oh, is this real? You know, does this group actually have data? Ticketmaster has has made it known that they did have a data breach disclosure. Um, so change your password if you have a Ticketmaster account, though, honestly, oof, that's so expensive to go to a concert anymore. Um, and it kind of trickles into what I read is that another company that worked with Ticketmaster was actually breached, which may have led to the Ticketmaster breach, something along those lines. Um, Snowflake did note the attacks succeeded due to poor customer configuration. This appears to be a targeted campaign directed at users with single factor authentication. As part of this campaign, threat actors have leveraged credentials previously purchased or obtained through info feeding malware. Um, but there's really not a whole lot of information about um, the Ticketmaster breach and how much was scooped up. I read that peop that they've got name. I mean, I think the group said that they have names, address, payment detail information for quite a few users because they're charging, what did they want for the data? Um, half a billion dollars. So they're saying that the data they've got is worth $500 million to the right customer. What scares me is that means that there's probably somebody out there that can pay for this data. And if it is what they say it is, um, these folks are in for a massive payday or a gigantic arrest. Uh, we'll have to see what happens. I'm really curious to see what happens here. Um, but like a lot of people said, this just means Ticketmaster is going to add another fee for data protection. Uh, <laughs> but it sucks. I'm glad I don't have any Ticketmaster data because I don't go to concerts because I'm a big loser. 
But anyway, that's it for sysadmin news. Nice quick one. Probably not even going to edit it very much other than EQ it. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy the content we cover. Leave a comment down below. Let me know what you think about the news I discussed. And, you know, if you like the content and you want to support the channel, there's always super thanks, but a thumbs up is enough. So thanks, and we'll see you in the next one.